a rotation of the mirror. Let's picture the, the question. A spot is created on a spot. So we have We have a screen. And then a mirror. We are told that the distance from the mirror, usually we take the measurement from the center of the mirror. The distance, if the distance between the mirror and the screen is 35 centimeters. So this distance, this is a screen. This is a screen. Come in. Okay, and this distance is what we are giving us, 35 centimeter. So a spot is created. Let's assume that, okay, there is a fair spot. So there is a source of light, which when it is incident, it creates a fair spot. Or let's even take it to be the fair spot is here. Now, after the mirror is rotated through, and this distance from the mirror is a 35. After rotating the mirror through an angle of seven degree clockwise. So the mirror is rotated. We are not here, we are always keeping the incident ray fixed. So after rotating the mirror through an angle of seven degree, this is a seven degree. The spot moves up. So the old spot is here, then the new spot. The spot moves up. So this ray becomes the first reflected ray which forms the spot, spot one. Then this ray also becomes the second reflected ray which forms the spot two on the screen. This is the screen. Now the question is that, calculate the distance from the new spot to the mirror. There's a new spot. There's the first one and there's the mirror. So we are calculating this distance. Okay. But the concept of rotation of mirror is that when you rotate a mirror, the angle between the reflected rays, the angle between the reflected rays is two times the angle of rotation. So if this is seven degree, then the angle between the first reflected ray, which forms the spot, and then the second reflected ray, which forms the spot, is twice the angle of rotation. So if we are to find this distance, the distance between the mirror and then the new spot, okay? Because we have the angle, when we take the cosine, cosine of the angle between the reflected rays, which is 14 degree, this will be equal to 35 divided by this distance, maybe O E B. So O E. And OA is the distance between the mirror and then the new spot. Therefore, OA equals um, 35 cos of 14 degree. 
So help me determine 35 divided by plus 14 degree. What did we get for that? In Shira Mayan Cool. 35 divided by cos 30, uh, 14 degree. Thirty six point zero seven. Inshira, come again. Thirty six point zero seven. Fifty six point zero seven. Thirty six. Is that five six? Three six three. Okay. Point zero seven. So. This is a, a typical application of rotation of mirror. The whole trick is that the angle between the reflected rays is always twice the angle of rotation. So if this is rotated 7 degrees, then this will be 14. Now, the spot is formed on the screen. And so it forms something like a right angle triangle. And so you can easily calculate whatever you are being asked to determine. Okay, let's determine the distance between the, the spots. Spot one, calculate for the distance between the spots. Spot one and then, or the first spot and then the second spot. Do that for me quickly. The distance between the old spot and then the new spot, then we move on. Ishra. Yeah, please, can you go over why it's cause 14 and the rest? Oh, you see, I'm sure you understand how we got the 14. Yes. Okay. So, the, the, um, the first reflected ray, the second reflected ray, this is a screen. So, it forms something like a right angle triangle. This is a screen. First spot, second spot. We have this distance from the mirror to the screen, 35 centimeter. This is 14. Two times. This is the first reflected ray, second reflected ray. So we have this right angle triangle. And this, this time, the hypotenuse is what we have to determine. And so using any appropriate trade ratio, you can easily determine the hypotenuse. Is sure you okay? Yes. So I'll look for similar questions and then just send them to you to try your hands on, okay? And the application of um, rotation of the mirror. Any question? Ama and Ko, any question? Lizzie? Then let's look at curved mirrors. We've done plain mirrors. We've done plain mirrors with, uh, extensively. Formation of images in plain mirror and all that. Then those calculations. So let's move on to spherical mirrors or curved mirrors. This time we are talking about a kind of mirror that is curved or spherical. Okay. So spherical mirrors. Or spherical, spherical or curved mirrors. Under the spherical or curved mirrors, we have two main types. There are two types of 
two types of spherical spherical mirrors. We have one concave concave or or converging mirror. Then we have convex or diverging mirror. Okay, so we have concave, concave or converging, and then convex or diverging. For concave mirror, how does it look like? Let me show you an application of, you see, uh, the reflecting surface in dot lights. You know, this is a mirror. This thing you see in touch light, this is a, uh, the reflector within touch lights. It's a mirror. Okay. Now for punky mirror, how does it look like? For concave mirror, the reflecting surface curves inwardly. So we have this shape. Now this side is the coated part. The part that is coated with silver to make it opaque. So the light cannot escape from it when incidentally. So this ciliated line represents the coated parts, coated parts of the mirror. And the arrow, this arrow represents the reflecting surface. So look at the mirror within the torchlight. There's the back. This is the back of the mirror. This is the inner part. Within the inner, inner part, we have the bulb at the center. We have the bulb at the center. So for, for concave mirror, the reflecting surface curves inwardly. So this part which reflects curves inwardly. We have the reflecting surface curving in, inwardly, and then the coated part curves outward. So for for concave mirror, the reflecting surface Curves inwardly and the coated surface curves outwardly. So I said the arrow represents the direction, represents the di uh, reflected surface. So if you we incident light at the reflecting surface, this is just the back, which curves out 
this is the coated surface. Let me bring it here. The coated or painted surface. So the description given to a concave mirror is that the reflecting surface curves inwardly, whereas the coated surface curves outwardly. You see, this is a plane mirror is represented as this. It's a plane or it's plain. So there's a straight line, but we indicate the part that is coated with these ciliated lines. So with this, it means that this side is the coated surface, whereas this side is the reflecting surface. But when it comes to Concave mirror, the reflecting surface curves within, whereas the coated surface curves outwardly. Please, are, are we okay with reflect, um, concave mirror? Are we okay? Yes. Now let's look at why is it called converging? If something converges, what does it mean? If something is said to converge, what does it mean? Yes, Ishra. If something converges, what does it mean? Lizzie and Co. Go ahead. Maybe I'm not sure, but they meet or like they yes. come. It Yes, they they meet. Or they, yes, they all gather at a common point. So for for concave mirror, if we incident rays that are um parallel rays or light, if we incident rays that are parallel. This one has the ability to, just after reflection, bring all the reflected rays at a common point. So, this is a beam of rays. A concave mirror has the ability to reflect all the incident light in such a way that they all converge at a common point. Or they all meet at common point. So this is a reflected reflected, reflected, reflected. This is also reflected. So all the reflected rays converge at a common point. The reason for classifying concave mirror as converging. Okay, so it is said to be a converging mirror because all reflected rays are converged at a, at a point in front of the mirror. And this point is real. Now let's look at the other type of mirror, which is convex or divergent. For convex mirror, Here, for convex mirror, what happens is that over here, the, it is just like the opposite of this one. The reflecting surface, 
We have convex mirror. The reflecting surface curves outwardly. Over here, it is the reflecting surface curves inwardly. But for convex, it curves the reflecting surface curves outwardly. outwardly and the coated and the coated surface also curves inwardly so over here, we are looking at the reflecting surface curving outwardly. Outwardly. The arrow, direction of the arrow indicates the reflecting surface. So the coated surface curves inwardly. So, reflecting surface and this is the cool tech surface. It's just like it's just like convex mirror, but this time around, incident in the light here or race here. Okay, so this side becomes the reflecting surface, and then you rather coat the part that curves inwardly to be the coated surface. So the description is that for convex mirror, the reflecting surface curves outwardly, and then the coated surface curves inwardly. It's just like it's just like when you have a brand new spoon, okay, the part that scoops liquids. If you are looking at the part that scoops liquid, okay, this is a reflecting surface. And then the back is a coated surface. In that case, it becomes concave or converging mirror. Now, if you should turn it the other way around, when this is the reflecting surface, and then the other end is the coated surface, it becomes um, a convex mirror. Please, are we okay? Yes, please. Let's look at why convex mirror is known as diverging mirror. Let me use the same diagram or drawing to explain. So light is incidented. We incident light at where the reflecting surface is. So if it's an object, the object is placed in front of the reflecting surface. So for this kind of mirror, if you incident rays that are parallel to the mirror, this is how they behave. Or the mirror deals with incident parallel rays or light. Rays are denoted by arrows. So you don't draw a ray without an arrow. When the ray hits the mirror at 90, it goes, it is 
reflected along the same path. Now, when the ray hits the mirror at an angle, it will, over here, it will reflect and obey the laws of reflection. So this becomes the reflected rays. So this is what they have, uh, it is happening. The ray or the mirror reflects, reflects the incident light. So these are the reflected rays. These are the reflected rays. But you realize that over here, the reflected rays are becoming so dispersed, diverged. So as they move, they become widened, their path becomes widened, okay? And so this is the fact that reflected rays are diverged. That is the reason, okay, I'll draw it. Let me draw it here instead. Let me draw it here. So I have this as the mirror. So it is a convex mirror and so We have the reflecting surface coming outwardly. And then, now let's incident about two, three um, reflected or incident lights. Parallel rays. So these are the parallel lights. One always, one, two, three, four. Now, after reflection, when the rays incident or hits on the mirror, the reflected rays are diverged. Every reflected ray after its interaction with the mirror is diverse. So let me draw this properly. So every reflected ray after its interaction with the mirror is diverged. So this is reflected, another reflected, this is another reflected ray and then another reflected ray. 
you realize that this reflected rays, okay, moving away from the mirror, are diverged. They are scattered, okay. The reason for this being termed as divergent. So this is convex or or diverging. mirror because they divert reflected rays and this is concave or converging mirrors any question let's also talk about the uses the uses how do we apply, or what is the usage of this kind of mirrors? Plain mirrors, for plain mirrors, we um, it is used for, or it is used as a dressing mirror. It is also used as shaving mirror. It is used for designing mirror periscopes, okay? So we basically use plain mirrors as dressing mirror, shaving mirror, and it is also used in mirror um, periscopes. But let's look at concave mirror. How do we use Concave mirror. Concave mirror one is used. Ishra, your hand is up. Mr. Idia, please, mm -hmm. what is in the convex mirror? What mm -hmm. if the shape was drawn like the concave mirror, but then the other edge was put inside? Oh, yes, I, I, I talked about that. Concave mirror is like this. The reflecting surface curves inwardly. So the arrow represents the reflecting surface. And so this is the coated surface. Okay. It's okay. all about how you indicate the reflecting and then the coated surface. The same curve. I can also design this. But use, represent the reflected surface by this arrow and then put this end and it becomes um, convex mirror. Okay. So in that case, if it's the object, the object will be placed here. So this becomes the reflecting surface, whereas this side becomes put there. So you can use the same shape, but it's about how, how you are indicating the Reflecting and then they put that part. Okay. Mr. Dia. Hello. Okay. Please, uh, my network was misbehaving. So I didn't really hear what you said. I what I heard, the last thing I heard was let's talk about some examples. That was the last thing I heard. I didn't hear like anything again so long. So if like the examples you can mention them again. Examples, examples. I, I was talking about um types of types of uh, convex, types of spherical mirrors, okay? And I spoke about concave or converging and convex or diverging. Eresi, did you get um, these diagrams? Yes, I got these diagrams. What I didn't get was, I think something, something dressing mirror or something. Ah, okay, like okay, uses, uses, uses of uh, mirrors. And I was talking about plain mirrors. Plain mirrors are used as dressing mirrors. Okay. Plain mirrors are used as dressing mirror, shaving mirror, and for uh, it is also used in mirror periscopes or to design mirror periscope. 
So we were basically talking about uses of mirrors. But I started with plain mirrors. So that is it. Those three examples were mentioned for plain mirrors. Then let's look at for uh, concave or convergent mirrors. Uses of concave or convergent mirrors. Concave mirrors are used, okay, in in touch lights as a reflector. So this is a, this is a concave mirror, okay. They are used in here to reflect light so that it can be zoomed or beamed to a particular spot. So it is used in touch lights as reflector. Then it is also used in car headlight lamps. So used in torch lights. Torch lights. Search lights. Okay. Touch light, search light, then also use in car headlights lamps. Okay, look at the headlight of cars. Those, the, and then the tail light of cars. What actually reflects the incident beam? Okay. Uh, concave, modified concave mirrors. And here I'm talking about this headlight in cars. Okay. Within the tail, at the tail end of cars. So these are the car headlight lamps. Then it is also used in search light. Search lights are used in the prisons. This huge, and then the, the stadium, okay, uh, flood light. And also it is also used in uh, flood lights. Flood lights. So all those lamps that zooms or beams light, okay, through a certain distance, uses concave or convex, uh, converging mirrors. Okay. So these are, and it is also used in, in some um, shaving mirrors. It is also used as a, some shaving mirrors are designed using concave mirrors, but, it can um an application that can easily be identified uh in touch lights, search light, flood light, and then in car headlight lamps. These are some of the uses of um Amma. <laughs> the car headlights. Why mm -hmm. isn't the convex mirror used and rather the concave is used? Okay, that's it. We'll look at it. Okay, and another question. Mm -hmm. the, please, the, the cars, have you seen the, the mirrors at both sides of the car? There's small, small mirrors where the driver can look through, maybe if you want to see his hair or something. Mm -hmm. Is that mirror concave or convex? It is. Convex. I'll talk about that. I can. Mr. Pia. Hello. So the examples on the board right now, they are for con 
concave so, or converging? Because of the flat light, the such they are for concave. Yes, concave or converging. Shoot. Concave mirrors or converging mirrors. Then let's look at convex. Convex or diverging mirrors. Convex mirrors are used in car head level, a uh, side view mirror, I say, um, the side view mirror of cars. These are used in car side view mirror. And head level mirrors. So they are used as car side view mirrors or in the manufacture of the car side view and head level. So Ama, the mirror at the at the head level of the driver. And then those the mirror at the side of the cars. These are um, convex mirrors. Okay. You understand why it is preferably a convex but not concave later. Two, it is also used it is also used in the supermarkets. at the supermarkets and shops. And shops for security purposes. So if you have visited some supermarkets, these kind of mirrors are mounted at one side of the um, the corners of the supermarkets. And somebody is employed to be viewing it. Okay, and so in the absence of CCTV camera, this, um, these mirrors are used for security purposes. Then it is also used it is also used the third one is that it is also used um, or mounted at, okay, Kevy roads. As you enter into the Kevy road, it is convex mirrors are mounted there to enable drivers to have a better viewing at, the, at their back. So convex mirrors are uh, also mounted at
heavy roads for safety, land use for safety purposes. So these are about three um, applications or uses of convex mirrors. I have already. Um, Mr. Dia. Mm -hmm. So can you, you see the lens, the glass, mm -hmm. the, the, the lens itself is kind of like curved. Mm -hmm. So can that one also be an example of a convex mirror? No, lenses, lenses are different from mirrors. Oh, under, under. Optical instrument will be talking about lenses. So lenses are different from mirrors. Okay. Yes, mm. Now, why do we use convex mirror as car side view mirror, head, head level mirrors, and not plain? or concave. Why do we choose convex mirrors for these purposes, but not plain or uh, concave mirror? Now, let's, let's take this to be the length of the mirror. So the whole aperture is the length. A, B. So this is the whole length. When an object, a point object, is placed in front of the mirror, and light hits the extremes of the mirror, light from the object, this is the object O, hits the extremes of the mirror. So light from this now whenever light hits a plane mirror, it has to reflect. So this is a reflected ray. And light from the same object hitting the other extreme. reflects. Okay. So the the angle between the reflected rays gives the field of view of this mirror. So this is the field field view. view or viewing or viewing angle or angle of view. So field view or angle of view of the mirror. So this is the range of view for this aperture, length of the mirror. If we, if we take the same aperture, this time for concave, A, B. When you place an object in front of it, and light hits the extremes, Concave mirror has the ability to converge. So another ray from the object hitting the other extreme. This one reflect, also reflects. 
but its reflection is such that it will converge reflected rays at a common point. So reflected reflected but it will converge reflected rays and so this angle becomes a field of view or the viewing angle of the image formed. This becomes the viewing angle. So let me indicate this by alpha. Don't forget, plane mirrors will just also reflect and converge. I'm sorry, divert the reflected rays. But for, for concave, this is plane. It converges reflected rays, hence its other name as converging mirror. So the reflected rays from the object after interaction with the mirror will be would all be converged at a point. And so this becomes the field of view, field of view, or the angle of view for concave. Let's look at it for the same aperture, but for convex. A, B. So this one, the, uh, the reflecting surface curves outwardly. The object is here. This is convex or diverging. So a ray from the object, when it hits the extremes of the mirror, let me even reduce. When the rays hit the extremes of the mirror, this one diverges reflected rays. It also diverges. Its extent of diversion is wide compared to the diversion created by plane mirror. So there's a reflected, this is the reflected. So let's look at the field of view of this. Alpha. Now let's compare all of them. This is convex or divergent. So look at the field of view of the three. For plane mirror, this is it. Concave mirror, this is it. And then convex mirror, this is it. When you compare all the three, you realize that convex mirror has a wider field of view or angle of view. And because of this special property the mirror ha has, when you use it as side view mirror, it enables drivers to see, okay, a wider environment or a, I have a wider field of view of the, of the back or the driving environment. And so, that is the reason for which it is used as side view mirror. So that when you are driving and you look through, you can see um, a larger area, okay, of the car's environment than, than plain mirror. As for convex mirror, you don't talk about it. And then when it is also mounted at the shops, supermarket and the shops, because convex mirror has a wider field of view, it can have enable those who are meant to be, be observing it to have a wider viewing of the shopping area compared to what plane mirror would give you. The reason for it being also mounted at curvy roads so that when drivers 
get to that point, it can help them have a better view of the environment for security or safety purposes. Class, are we okay? Um, Mr. Dia. Yeah. Hello. Please, can you tilt your, this one? Camera. Your camera to the two phones to draw the document. I'm a racist, are you okay? Yes, please. So it is used for these purposes because of one, it has wider field of view. When you use it, you can have a better viewing of your environment than what plain mirror would give you. As for complex mirror, we don't talk about it. So it has a wider field of view. I do how to be, are you there? In Shira? Are you girls there? Yes, please. Okay. A queer doma. Yeah. Okay. So there, please have a question. Okay, go ahead. Is why does the side mirror appear to like make images like maybe uh, the the distance shot? What do you mean by the distance shots? Um, usually the right images tend to be um, like the distance shorter than it actually is. Closer than they actually appear. Yes, please. Why is that so? You understand as we move on, okay? Okay. Yes, please. Mm -hmm. Let me add the shots to the page. <laughs> Else your parents will beat you. Mm -hmm. The other advantage is that the other advantage of using this is that For, for a uh, concave mirror, depending on the position of the object, the image form can be inverted or upright. Depending on the, depending on the position of the objects in front of the mirror, the image form can be inverted or can be upright. And you can even experiment this using a brand new spoon. Okay. A brand new spoon, when you use the scoop, uh, scooping area, that open area, as concave mirror, then I just move the the um the spoon back and forth. Okay, a certain point of the object would give you an image that is inverted, and other points will give you images that are upright. Imagine driving and then. Seeing objects, the um images of objects around us inverted. That we're seeing it here. Say people, the image of people you see are inverted. It can even confuse your concentration or the driving. But for diverging or convex mirrors, no matter where the object is placed, 
The image formed is always upright, straight. The head level is up, the leg, the leg level is down. It doesn't behave like convex mirror where at a certain position of the object, image is upright. Another position too would give you an image which is inverted. For convex mirror, no matter the position of the uh, object, the image form is upright. And that, I mean, helps driving better than seeing people whose images in the mirror are inverted, <laughs> okay? Then the other advantage is that, in fact, images formed by a convex mirror is always closer to the mirror, okay? It's always closer to the mirror. Appear the reason for what you said that images formed are always closer than they actually appear or they actually are. This is one of the characteristics of images formed by convex mirror. The image form is always closer to the mirror. So what you see is the image, but in actual fact, the image you are seeing is always closer to the mirror than the real object or than the real situation. So when driving, you may think, especially if you are reversing, you may think that, oh, the driver is so close to hitting an object. But in actual fact, what you are seeing as the image, okay, the image is close to the mirror than the object, the real object. So it's an optical illusion. Okay. And we'll look at what does that. But images formed by plain uh, convex mirrors are always closer to the mirror than they actually are all the objects. All right. Please, any question? So the advantage convex mirror has over the other mirrors is that one, it has a wider field of view. Convex mirror has a wider field of view. It has a wider field of view than image formed by convex mirror, no matter the position of the, of the object, is always upright or erect. It's always upright. So that is the key. It has a wider field of view and it always forms an upright image. And so that becomes an advantage over convex mirror. Don't forget, plain mirror would always give you an upright image. But for convex, for convex, it will give you, uh, sorry, for concave, it sometimes forms an upright and then inverted. All right. Now let's look at formation of images in spherical mirrors. Formation of images in spherical mirrors. But before we do that, let's look at an, another area we'll be applying under this same subtopic parts of the spherical mirror, parts of the spherical mirror. So, a spherical mirror, the length of a spherical mirror is known as, let's take this to be the length. So the length AB or the width of the spherical mirror AB 
is called the aperture. The width or length AB is known as the aperture. This is the aperture of the mirror. Aperture, aperture. So when when I talk about the aperture of the mirror, I just mean this width or this length of the mirror AB. Then the center of the mirror. The center of the mirror denoted by the letter P. The center of the mirror is, is known as the the pole. The pole, P O L E. So the pole refers to the center of the mirror. The pole. Now, a line through a line drawn through the pole of the mirror, which actually divides the mirror into two equal parts. A horizontal line drawn through the center. Through the center which divide the mirror into two equal parts. A line drawn through the center, the center which Device the mirror into two equal parts as known as. This is known as the principal principal axis. So the principal axis of a mirror is a line that divides the mirror into two equal parts through the pole. Okay, so Let's indicate the beginning point as maybe O. This line, the line segment OP, the line segment OP is what we are describing as the principal axis. The line segment OP is what we are calling as the principal axis of the line or of the mirror. Please, are we following? Yes. Are we following? Yes or no? Yes. Yes, please. You must follow because today my my energy level is down to <laughs> okay. Then let's come to another point. 
So we have identified the aperture, which is the width or the length of the mirror. The, up, uh, the pole is the center of the mirror. And then the optical, uh, the principal axis, which is a line we divide the mirror into two equal parts through the pole. There is a point on the principal axis. There is a point on the principal axis where all rays that are close and parallel to the principal axis actually converge after reflection. So there is another point on the principal axis. Okay. But this point on the principal axis is such that rays that are close and parallel to the principal axis. So if this is a ray close and parallel to the principal axis, this is another ray Close and parallel to the principal axis. All rays that are close and parallel to the principal axis. Hey, Rama. Hey, Rama. You are just busting my eardrum. So, so long as the ray is parallel and so close to the principal axis, after reflection, they will all converge at that point. All rays that are close and parallel to the principal axis, after reflection, actually converge at that point. This point, where rays that are close and parallel to the principal axis actually converge after reflection, the point is called the principal focus of the mirror, or the principal focus or the focal point. So, when we talk about the principal focus or the focal point of a, of a mirror, the principal, let me write something, the principal focus, or uh, the focal point focal point of a mirror is a point on the principal axis Where rays that are parallel and close and close to the principal axis. Converge or appear to appear to converge after reflection. So 
it is the principal focus or the focal point of, of a mirror is a point on the principal axis where rays that are parallel and close to the principal axis actually converge or appear to, to converge after reflection. Now, they converge or appear to converge. For, for concave mirrors, for concave mirror, this parallel rays actually converge after reflection. But for convex mirror, for convex mirror, the parallel rays actually appear to converge. That is why, if you recall, when I was explaining why this is concave, uh, converging and this is uh, diverging, I was doing this. Let me draw this line. So this is convex. Convex mirror diverges. So over here, when you incident parallel or paraaxial rays, this one has the ability to diverge rays that are parallel. So all the rays are diverged after reflection. So, but the diverted rays always appear to be diverted from a point behind the mirror. So this is diverted, but it's always appear to be diverted from a point behind the mirror. This is diverted all right. but it appears to be diverted from this point. This ray is diverted, but it appears to be diverted from this point. This is diverted, but it appears to be diverted. So these are the diverted rays for convex. But the diverted rays always appear to be diverted from a point behind their mirror. And so, and this point where the diverted rays actually appear to be diverted from, we call this point as the principal focus. Principal focus or the focal point. Then for concave, the, the, the reflected rays actually converge in front. For this reason, we say that the principal focus or the focal point of a concave mirror is real. It's real because the diverted or reflected rays actually converge in front of the mirror. Over here, we say that the principal focus of a convex mirror is virtual because that point, that point is not real. It is a point where diverted rays appear to be diverted from. This rays, this diverted rays or reflected rays, they appear to be diverted from this point. So it is not actually a real thing, okay? And so we say that the principal focus F of a convex mirror is virtual, virtual. Whereas the principal focus of a concave mirror is real. Equiaduma and co, are you okay? Inshira, Lizzie, Priscilla and co, are you fine? Safe. Safe. Hello. If I want to write the else at the top, please can you adjust your your meal? Sorry, your camera. Don't, don't worry. 
Yeah, go on. please, can you shift it towards the right a bit? The ends are not very clear. Thank you very much. So the principal focus or the focal point of a mirror is a point on the principal axis where rays that are parallel and close to the principal axis actually converge or appear to converge after reflection. They actually converge or appear to converge after reflection. If the reflected rays actually converge, we say that then the principal focus or the focal point is real. And it is real for concave mirror. So we say that a concave mirror has a real principal focus. A concave mirror has a real principal focus. But for convex mirror, these rays appear to be, to be diverged from a point behind the mirror. They appear to be diverged from a point behind the mirror. And because that point isn't a real thing, but it's an apparent situation, we say that the principal focus or the focal point of a convex mirror is virtual. So why, if you are asked, why is the principal focus of a convex mirror described to be virtual? The answer is that it is because for convex mirror, the diverted rays or the reflected rays appear to be diverted from a point behind the mirror. The reason for describing capital F to be virtual. Am I in any question? No, please. All right. Then, there is another point. Now, before we move to, to the other point, please note that the distance between the principal focus and then the pole, this distance, and it applies to both mirrors, both spherical mirrors. That point where the rays actually converge or appear to be diverted from is a principal focus represented by a capital letter F. Now the, the distance between the pole and then the principal focus, this distance or length is known as the focal length. Focal length represented by the letter small f. So the focal length, focal length represented by small letter f is the distance between the pole of the mirror and then the principal focus. So all measurements, all measurements, linear measurements, it's all also taken from the pole. So if you want to measure the focal length, it is this distance from the pole to F. So you have to measure it right, left, where the pole is here. If you draw it, if you draw it here, for, for convex mirror, you have to also measure it from left to right, where the pole is here. The pole is here. So all measurements are taken from the pole. So the distance or the length between the pole and then the principal focus <laughs> is the focal length, represented by small letter F. So try to get the difference between capital F and small letter F. 
Capital F is the principal focus. And small f is the focal length. All right. Then there's another point on the principal axis. Let me clear. There's another point on the principal axis. Let me use concave. There's the center, so this is the pool. So if this is F, there's another point on the principal axis. But this point is such that a ray, irrespective of wherever the ray is coming from, so long as the ray incident on the mirror at an angle of 90 degrees, if the ray is coming from wherever, it can be coming from this source, but the necessary condition is that if the ray hits the mirror at 90, the ray can also come from a point here. A point here. Irrespective of wherever the ray is coming from, if it hits or incidents on the mirror at 90, I said no matter where the ray is coming from, the important condition is that the ray must hit the mirror at 90, 90 degrees. So this is perpendicular, this is perpendicular. If the ray hits the mirror at 90, it will incident and reflect along the same path. Incident and reflect along the same path. But its reflection, its incident must pass through a point on the principal axis. No matter where the ray is coming from, this ray shows that it is coming from up here. Please, are you watching? By this ray, what I'm saying is that the ray is from up here and then hitting the mirror. It is hitting the mirror at 90. Ray two is also coming from down here and then hitting the mirror at 90, okay? So they are coming from two different directions. But so far as the two rays hit the mirror at 90, they will reflect along the same path as the incident and also pass through, both of them will also pass through a common point on the principal axis. Okay, this point where Raise that incident on the mirror normally 90 degrees actually packs or converge after reflection is known as the center of curvature. The center of curvature. So C, we represent that point by letter C. C is known as the center of Curvature. And the center of curvature is a point on the principal axis where rays that incident or hit the mirror normally or at an angle of 90 actually pass or converge after reflection. So this is a point.
on the principal axis where Erezi. Um, Mr. Ujia. Yes. So the diagram, yes. Mm -hmm. Um the rays that are moving from the um the aperture to the to the there's the aperture. Um, a, a, B. That, yeah. Mm -hmm. So the rays are moving from the aperture to the center of cavity, the the of area, mm -hmm. which forms 90 degrees something then. So mm -hmm. that one. So are those the incident rays falls the ones moving away from the curvature? No, moving hey, yes. One of the ones are the are there. I listen. This arrow indicates that the ray is coming, hitting the mirror, right? After reflection, the arrow must be moved away from the mirror. So once you, you see an incoming array, an arrow coming to the mirror, it means that is the incident ray. This is the reflected ray. Are you okay? Yes, sir. So this is I. This is R. This is I. This is R. What I'm saying is that the ray can be coming from anywhere, but so long as it is incidenting at, a, at an angle of 90 on the mirror, it will reflect and pass through the same path as, as the incident. But no matter where the rays were coming from, they will all converge or pass through a point on the principal axis. The condition is that, the condition for this to happen is that the ray must hit the mirror at 90. So when the ray hits the mirror at 90, it will reflect along the same path as the incident and also either converge or pass through a point on the principal axis. And this point is what we call as the center of curvature. Are you okay? Yes, I'm okay. Amma. I'm sad, so... If the rays hit the mirror at an angle which is not 90 degrees, it, it will, will pass not, through a point it will, it, it will not pass through this point. It will not pass through or converge at C. It will rather pass through F. A different point. For F, for F, the rule is that the ray must be parallel and close to the principal axis. Such rays, we call them as paraaxial rays. So paraaxial rays are rays that are clo so close and parallel to the principal axis. If the ray is paraaxial, okay, after reflection, it will pass through the principal focus. And if the ray, no matter where it is coming from, incident on the mirror at 90, it would either convert or pass through the center of curvature C. Are you okay? Okay. Yes, please. So this is a point on the principal axis where race that incident. On the mirror, normally or perpendicularly,
Oh, I, I said it's a point on the principal as a well raise that incident on the mirror perpendicularly or normally converge or passes after reflection. Please note that this point also applies to both concave and convex. Okay. So if it is concave, when the rays hit it at 90, they will actually convert or pass. Pass through that point after reflection. If it is convex, they will appear to convert or pass virtual. So this one actually happens. This one appear to, to take place. Now the distance between the pole and the center of curvature is represented by the letter R and then it is known as the radius of curvature. So the distance The distance from the pole to the center of curvature of curvature C is known as the radius of curvature of curvature R. So this distance is represented by the letter R, the radius of curvature of the, of the mirror. Now there is a relationship between the radius of curvature and then the focal length. And this relationship is very, very important when we come to formation of images. Radius of curvature R is always equal to two times the focal length F. So I say R is equal to 2F. And note that here we are not proving it, but I'm giving it to you. R is equal to 2F, where R is equal to radius of curvature and F is equal to the focal length. What we mean is that, look at this distance. For concave, if from the pole to this point, SC, center of curvature, you mean this distance, SR, okay, then, if this is F, the principal focus, this distance from the pole to F is what we are calling as the focal length F. Okay. Now, if this is X, then R is equal to 2 times X. We are saying that let this distance be F. So if you measure this to be maybe 2 centimeter, 
Then from the pole to the center of curvature must be two times two, four. If F is five, R will be 10. If F is 10, R will be 20 in that order. And this is very, very, very important. R is equal to two times F. We'll be applying it so much in formation of images and in mirror formula. Okay, so these are the key measurements or parts of the spherical mirror. Pole, the aperture, the pole, the focal length, I'm uh, sorry, the aperture, the pole, the principal focus, the focal length, the center of curvature, and the radius of curvature. We'll be using it in our ray diagram. Okay, now let's get into ray diagrams. Ray diagrams, formation of images in spherical mirrors using ray diagrams. How do we describe the image formed in or by a particular spherical mirror using ray diagram. So let's look at it for concave. So, uh, something to represent. Now in ray diagrams, the aperture of the mirror is, 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 um, is just a, a small one. You draw a smaller aperture. You draw a smaller aperture. Then, usually, if it is about convex mirror, you can just draw a vertical line. Now, this arrow indicates that the mirror is convex. Sorry, concave. So this is concave. If the mirror is convex, this is how you draw a vertical line. So this is concave, this is convex. You don't need to draw a bigger aperture, no. That this is A, B, just draw this. Then you draw the principal axis through it. And it caters for concave mirror. Then this rep represents the pole the center. In using ray diagrams, you must always take care of R is equal to 2F. That you choose if you are assuming that the focal length is maybe 10 centimeter. You measure 10 centimeter from P and so the radius of curvature would also be 20. So I'm taking 20 centimeter from P. 10 for F, this is F. And then this point is for C. By doing this, I've taken care of R is equal to 2 uh, because from the pole to this point is F. From the pole to C is R, and this is 10 centimeter, and this is also 20. So I've taken care of this. So you must do that. Very, very important. There are rules of the game. Let's quickly go through the rules before we try it with one. 
So a ray of light, the ray must always come from the objects. So a ray of light coming from the objects Okay, and if the ray is parallel to the principal axis, if the ray coming from the object is parallel to the principal axis, after reflection, the ray must pass through the principal focus. So a ray parallel to the principal focus, uh, principal axis, after reflection must pass through the principal focus. So this is rule one. The first rule, a ray of light parallel to the principal axis after reflection passes through the principal focus. Rule two. The second rule is that And please, it applies to both concave and convex. Let me just draw a sketch to represent it. We are just going through the rules. So this is this is P. Sorry, this is P is here. Let me take this to be F. Meaning the same. So this is also C. The second rule is that a ray of light, irrespective of wherever it is coming from, if it is passing through the principal focus or coming from it after reflection. The reflected ray must be parallel to the principal axis. So here, the ray is passing through the principal focus or coming from it. After reflection, the reflected ray must be parallel to the principal axis. This is rule two. Please, are you there? Yes, please. Rule two. The third rule. F is here. C is here. And please. I am just doing a sketch, but in red diagram, you must take measurements. The third rule is that a ray of light through hitting the mirror at 90, if the ray, irrespective of wherever it is coming from, hits the mirror at 90, It will incident and reflect along the same path and pass through a point on the principal axis. And this point is the center of curvature. But note that the rays must always come from the objects. No matter where the ray is coming from. If it is just uh, hitting the mirror at 90, it would reflect and pass through the same point and either convert or pass through a point on the principal axis. And this is the center of curvature. And the final rule is this. The final rule four is that
F is here. C is here. If the rule, uh, if the ray hits the pole, no matter where the ray is coming from, if it exactly hits the pole. It will reflect at the same symmetry. Yeah, what I mean is that the angle here from the incident ray to the principal axis must be the same as a, the angle from the principal axis to the reflected ray. So it's reflect at the same symmetry. So if this is 30 degrees, this will also be 30 degrees. And this is on condition that the ray hits the pole of the mirror, P. So these are the four rules to be used in describing the nature of the image form for both convex and concave. Any question? Mr. Yeah. Mr. Amma. Um, sir, please, could you repeat the fourth rule again? The fourth rule is that this is the ray coming from the object. The ray exactly hits the pole of the mirror. It hits the center of the mirror. Once the ray hits the pole of the mirror, it will reflect at the same axis. So if the incident ray makes an angle of 30 degrees with the principal axis, the reflected ray also makes an angle of 30 degrees with the principal axis. And that is what I'm talking about. What symmetry are the same symmetry means, right? Yes, please. So these are the rules we'll be using for our ray diagrams on Friday, okay? Formation of images in spherical mirrors. And the rules applies to both concave and then convex. It, is, it isn't for one of them. Any question? Inshira Akwahin. Inshira. Okay, in that case, this is where I draw the curtains on today's meeting. If you have any question, as if you don't have any question, we will end here and then, Amma. Mr. Adria, Mr. Adria, please, um, the second rule and the fourth rule, the second rule, the way which is passing through the focal point. The focal point, is this like something that's already existing? Have you seen like the ray? The ray in the fourth rule is not passing mm -hmm. through the focal point. It is, it is hitting in the fourth rule, the ray hits the pole, the center of the mirror. And so the, the second rule. Mm -hmm. How did the focal point exist? Since no ray has to hit to to form the focal point. I'm saying that the focal point either exists for concave or appears to exist for convex. It is a point practic it is and it is a proven um point practically. Okay. When rays are close and parallel to the principal axis, after reflection, they all converge at a point in uh either in front or behind the mirror. And this point is what we are calling as the principal axis. And it is real. Oh, it happens. It actually happens, right? Okay. Okay. All right. Okay, so in the absence of any further question and then um cross examination, whatever.
That's why I'd rather get on today's meeting. Thanks for your time and in your presence. Until Friday, bye bye, and take care of yourselves. Thank you. Bye. All right.